Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in June 23. There's lots of variety this month, some very chill, calming games, others are very dark and moody, some surprising hits, and lots of unique, interesting mechanics. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything that the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. By the way, I'm currently working insanely hard to get my game demo ready for the Steam Festival next week. I've implemented something like 10 different mechanics this week, really productive, the game is really starting to take shape. I can't wait to have you all play it, I really hope you'll like it. Make sure you add it to your wishlist, stay tuned for a testing livestream this weekend, and go play it on Monday. Alright, so starting off at number 10 with a very successful indie sequel, here is Darkest Dungeon 2. This one builds upon the original. If you don't know, this game features a very punishing but also very satisfying road trip through a very dangerous world where you not only fight some creatures, but also your own inner demons. You fight with some nice turn-based combat using all kinds of abilities and spells that also take into account positioning. Each hero is also unique with their own story that you can uncover in every run, and it's also a roguelike where each run lasts anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours, and you keep getting some persistent upgrades. Every run is unique, and every run leads to different encounters with different heroes as you'll learn more about this world. The reviews were actually a bit polarizing in the beginning when this came out. Plenty of people did not like some big changes from the original, but the recent reviews are much more positive, so it seems like they really listened to feedback and improved the game significantly during early access. Next here is a very good looking puzzle adventure game called Planet of Lana. This was one of the big standouts of E3 two years ago. Visually it has a very unique style, very flat colors which looks surprisingly great. It's an adventure puzzle platformer, which this is usually a genre where it's really difficult to find success. You really need something that looks excellent just like this one to stand out. It also helps how the game has has a really cute cat-like creature that follows you around. It features some excellent design and music, really fantastic vistas and some cinematic scenes. So if you like story-focused games and this one looks great, already has over 700 reviews at 94% positive, so people seem to love it. For something quite a bit more hardcore with a nice mix of genres, here is Silica. It's a nice mix of first-person shooter combined with an RTS. Personally, I always enjoy this mix in theory, even though in practice it's actually really difficult to make it work. In the strategy layer, you can guide your units, place down buildings, set some orders and harvest resources. Then you can dive down into first person and engage into some intense first person combat. You can fight as infantry or drive around some very weighty, very powerful vehicles and engage the aliens. And one really awesome thing is how you can also play as the alien faction. You can control some weird bug-like creatures to take out the infantry, really interesting. You can play either solo or with friends in either co-op or PvP. It's made by Bohemian Interactive, the ARMA developer. It's out now and already has almost 2,000 very positive reviews. Then for some VR, here is Requisition VR. This one caught my eye right away because it has a fascinating mechanic where you duct tape objects together to make some weapons. Definitely a very unique mechanic, which is actually perfect when combined with VR for the actual physical action of putting on duct tape. Then each object has tons of attach points. You can attach pretty much anything anywhere you want. Like for example, you can attach some kind of rotating machine to a shovel to make a really nice defensive weapon, or perhaps you can simply attach a spike to a wooden pallet and use it as kind of like a shield slash weapon combo. Everything is all physics based, so you can throw objects or pick them up. You can use a crowbar to break doors or use pistols to take out the zombies. You can explore this interesting town or dungeons in either solo or co-op. The reviews are mostly positive, so there's a little bit of jank, but the core concept is really unique. Then here is Mechabellum. This one is an epic auto battler where you command an army of awesome customizable mechs. You create your units, you can select their gear and type, so you can make some light or some heavy units. Then you set up their placement, really think strategically about where each unit goes. Then you watch as the mayhem happens, as massive amounts of units destroy each other in a really satisfying manner. Visually the game looks really excellent, the units feel really weighty and the explosions are really explosive. The game is all about tweaking your units to defeat the enemy. You can play another single player or against humans in PvP mode. It's got over 1500 very positive reviews despite on launching in early access, so this one is off to a very strong start. Then here's something which I would have guessed is pretty niche but is actually finding massive success. It's called Tape to Tape. It's a ice hockey game. And one twist is how it has roguelite elements, which is certainly an interesting addition to the sports game. And at the same time, your players also have abilities and synergy, so it's really not meant as a serious sport game. You've got a fun grappling hook you can throw to grab opponents, you can throw your stick and knock people out, or you can even bribe the ref. So it definitely takes a more wacky approach. There's a nice progression where you go from game to game, trying to restore your team to its former glory. 
It also has both online and local multiplayer, which is actually pretty rare nowadays. It has already got over a thousand very positive reviews, even though it's only in early access, so this one looks like a huge hit. Next, if you enjoy building colonization, then check out Occupy Mars the game. Like the name implies, the goal is to colonize and occupy Mars. You arrive at a barren wasteland and it's up to you to colonize the planet and turn it into a second home. This is very much a sandbox game. You gather resources, grow food, repair some complex equipment, build and upgrade your base and explore the world. The game is highly technical with lots of very realistic systems. You need to take care to generate enough power. You need to use that power to generate water and oxygen. You can conduct mining operations, set up some greenhouses, and be careful with the temperature. You can also work on your rover. You can change the hydraulics, operate the robot arm, modify the mining rig, and much more. So the game really has an emphasis on realism and physics. There's a little bit of jank with 800 mostly positive reviews, but if you like hyper-realistic sandboxes, then give it a try. Next, here's an interesting one with a strange name. It's called Above Snakes. It's a chill Wild West inspired RPG with lots of items, lots of crafting, building and survival elements. The most important mechanic is how you explore and build the world and you do that one tile at a time. As you approach the edge, you can decide what the next tile will be. Will you add a forest tile for some food or maybe something with some enemies for some combat? It features a really nice and complex house building system. You can build your own house from tons of different tiles to get it looking exactly as you want it. You can add a crafting station to craft some food and some weapons. You can smelt some iron, weave some clothes, or cut some wood. If you want to learn how to make a house building system just like this one, I actually made a fun tutorial quite a while ago. Then some tiles also have unique NPCs which you can chat with and get some quests. All in all, it's a really nice mix of building and adventure with an interesting unique mechanic. I saw Splattercat play this game a few months ago and it seemed really enjoyable. It is out now and is doing decently well with 600 mostly positive reviews. Then for something very relaxing, here is Panorama. It's a very peaceful city building puzzle game. You've got a set of tiles and you place them down one by one. Some are just a simple forest or river. Others have some tiny houses and some occupy multiple tiles with an interesting structure. Some buildings also have bonuses. Like for example, placing down a windmill will automatically place down a bunch of wheat tiles. There's also some cute animals. And of course you can get points just for petting them. One thing that really stands out to me on the trailer is how satisfying are the sound effects. Every time a new tile is revealed, it feels so calming and so satisfying. I'm personally not someone who usually notices sound effects too much so the fact that I noticed these really says a lot so if you want a very chill time then definitely give this a try it has almost 300 very positive reviews and at number one for my personal pick of the month here is an interesting simulator called flashing lights the simulator games are sometimes very janky but this one seems to be well made you can play as either a cop firefighter or medic, each with unique missions and gear. As a cop, you can engage in car chases, criminal incidents or hostage scenarios, or perhaps you want to play as a firefighter and put out some dangerous fires, or simply save someone's life as a medic. The conjunction of all three separate roles is really interesting. When played with friends, I assume this can be quite a lot of fun. You can play either solo or with 10 people for either fun or some serious roleplay. Each of the three, let's say classes, they all seem to have quite a lot of actions. So police can stop car chases with spikes, firefighters can carry people, and medics can place them on stretchers. I'd love to try this one out to see how they made all of these mechanics work. There's also an interesting universe of player-created mods to keep you and your friends playing the game for a long time. The game has been massively successful with over 10,000 very positive reviews. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in June 23. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own Steam game, Dinky Guardians, and add it to your wishlist. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.